Uh, very warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this course on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. So, in the last lecture, we had talked about uh, random processes, we had introduced what discrete time random processes are, we had talked about their probability density functions and cumulative distribution functions and uh, how to get one from the other. And uh, now, we will talk about certain properties of uh, these random processes. So, the first property, so we will essentially talk about two properties, one stationarity and two ergodicity. So, a random process random process is called nth order in the strict sense, a random process is called nth order stationary in the strict sense if its nth order probability density function, if its nth order probability density function or its nth order CDF for simplicity because CDF is easier to define we will define is independent of time or in other words its statistical properties properties do not change with its statistical properties do not change with time. So, how does this happen? Let us look at this. So, or let us look at a mathematical definition. This means that let us take the joint PDF of Xn at time instants. T1, T2 up to Tn. Let us take the joint PDF of Xn at time instants T1, T up, T2 up to Tn, then Xn called nth order nth order stationary in the strict sense if add a new slide above this it is called nth order stationary in the strict sense if we shift all the samples fixed lag tau and the so all of these are shift by a fixed lag cdf change that is f x t1 t2 x t n is equal to plus tau plus tau this or the probability less than equal to x1 x tn xn is equal to probability plus 
tau is equal to x1 x or in simpler words the joint pdf remains unaffected by the absolute locations of the end points in question and instead depends on their relative distances i e t2 minus t1 t3 minus t2 and so on so when a random process is wide sense stationarity then without the loss of generality we can make the first time index 0 and t2 and so on tn minus 1 without the loss of generality we can make the first time index 0 and continue or we can have a 0 time index as the reference point in a random process that is strict sense stationary. So, this is the strict definition of strict sense stationarity this is practically this is hard to verify. So, practically the definition of a strict sense uh, stationary process is hard to verify. So, we instead make do with what is known as wide sense stationary or what wide sense stationary or wide sense stationarity. So, stationary in the wide sense if it is strict sense or stationary or strict sense stationary for n equal to 2 or second order stationarity is wide sense stationarity. So, wide sense stationarity is satisfied a process is called wide sense stationary if the following conditions are satisfied. So, a process is called wide sense stationary if the following two conditions are satisfied. One, the mean function is a constant function or expected value of x t mu of x t equals mu x that is the mean function is constant naturally if it is uh, second order stationary means that is and can be written as f x 0 x tau this can equivalently be written like this. So, this so if it is stationary in the second sense then this is true if we take the marginal over 2. So, value of x 
t equals expected value of x0 for any without the loss of generality equals mu x. So this is the first property. The second property that uh, a wide sense stationary random process has to satisfy is that the second property is process is called wide sense station or stationary in the wide sense if it is function is function or auto covariance by extension function of the lag between the two instants and not of time. If you remember we had alternatively defined the autocorrelation function as this this is the autocorrelation function and uh, so if x is wide sense stationary or x being this can be equivalently because in the last lecture we use a slightly different notation so I will use that notation x x and l this is stationary in the wide sense if this and if function of L. So these are the two conditions, I will write these down, function should be constant, the correlation covariance function function of the lag. The correlation or covariance function should only be a function of the lag, fine. So this is about stationarity. So the next property that we are going to discuss is ergodicity and uh, in order to go to ergodicity let us define the two forms of averages that uh, random processes can have. So as I said earlier a random process can be interpreted in two ways, one a random process is a sequence of random variables. sequence responding to outcome of the an underlying random A sequence corresponding to an outcome of an underlying random experiment. These are the two ways to look at uh, a random process. So now in this sense if we want to define averages or we want to define the average value of a random process these two definitions lend to two different uh, 
definitions or lead to two definitions. The first definition if we view random process as sequence of random variables, then naturally think of the average that process given by xn as limit n tends to infinity or use capital N tends to infinity 1 by 2n summation minus n 2n plus 1 okay. minus n to n this or think of the average value of the random process as average as the average in time fine more generally for any function g x n of x n define this beast this is for any function g x of x n fine. So, if we look at the second definition. So, if then the average or the expected value of the random process across all outcomes or across the ensemble, ensemble of all the outcomes can be written as expected value of n equals integral x n omega f omega so you can see this as the equivalent of probability density for the 
all across the sample space the equivalent of probability density for the the equivalent of probability density for the outcome omega fine. So, this is a function of time naturally this is a function of time. Similarly, if I take or just right early I consider one sample function x and omega then defined So, this is for 1 omega equals limit n tends to infinity So, we can see that time average is a function. So, we can see that the time average is a function of the outcome of the random experiment and the ensemble average is a function of time. The time average is a function of the outcome of a random experiment. So, and more generally for any function g x, so I can define the time average So, these are the two interpretations of uh, the averages in random processes. So, now a wide sense random process is called ergodic. So, a process that is stationary in the wide sense is called ergodic if time averages for all functions are equivalent to the symbol average. Note that since this is a this process is an ergodic process by definition is already stationary in the wide sense which means that expected value of x t is already a constant. So, given as mu x. So, the expected value of x t is already a constant that is uh, given by mu x. So, since this is already a constant, 
if we say that or constant function sorry x n so already a let me move this to a discrete notation my fact so this is already a constant mu x so if x omega equals mu x for all omega so if for all the possible in layman terms obviously this is not the, the very strict definition of ergodicity but uh, for the purpose of this course this definition will suffice so you can look at another course on uh, random processes if you want uh, more mathematically precise definition but uh, for the purpose of this course we will stick to this definition if for all the possible sequences actually this definition implies with probability 1 but uh, we won't go into the intricacies of uh, how probability 1 is different from all so if something happens with probability 1 that doesn't mean it covers all the cases it's slightly different but uh, those intricacies of probability theory are not covered in this course maybe you can go look a course on probability theory and random processes if you want uh, those details those are slightly involved so we won't go into that so, if for all possible sequences generated the sample space the time average equals the ensemble average then the said process is known as ergodic then the said process is known as ergodic so far so good so now the question is that uh, we have defined ergodic processes we have defined by intersectionary processes so what's the use so the use is that uh, or the use of all these definitions is that uh, unless stated otherwise clearly almost all the signals that used for the generation or for the simulation of communication systems are assumed to be ergodic. So, almost all the signals that we will play with almost all the random processes that we will play with for the rest of this course are assumed to be ergodic. So, I could have assumed ergodicity without stating anything and uh, use these definitions for granted, but uh, for the sake of completeness we should know that. Uh, all everything that we are doing in this course is under the assumption of ergodicity. So, we have talked about ergodicity because everything that we will be doing in this course will be under the assumption of ergodicity. So, that said let us define a Gaussian process. So, a random process each of whose entries is Gaussian distributed. So, it can be continuous time it can be discrete time. So, a random process uh, each of whose entries or whose each entry is Gaussian is known as a Gaussian random process and uh, a Gaussian random process is completely characterized by its mean and covariance functions and in case of a Gaussian random process stationarity in the wide sense implies stationarity in the strict sense. So, this is uh, what is important that uh, so since or rather I can these two statements imply each other that uh, if it is completely characterized by its mean and auto covariance functions then so for we know that a Gaussian PDF nth order Gaussian PDF is completely characterized by its mean and auto covariance functions since white sense stationarity implies that mean and auto covariance are 
independent of time. So, since white sun stationarity implies that uh, mean and auto covariance are independent of time and nth order Gaussian PDF is fully characterized by the and and an nth order Gaussian PDF is fully characterized by its mean and orthocovariance function. So, we can use these two properties interchangeably or we can use one property to argue the other. So, this is about Gaussian processes basically if we generate a sequence of so actually and then 1 can also seen as a Gaussian process. So, we will go into the intricacies of rand and n 1 in the next lecture. So, now let us vectorize a random process that is let this is x m. So, I in uh, typing it is bold faced in writing it is underlined. So, length m vector of the process x at n is as this and correspondingly the correlation matrix matrix as the expected value of the outer product of x m with itself. So, let us unravel this correlation matrix. So, let us unravel this correlation matrix in the next slide and then we will see. So, x m So, this now let us uh, look at the outer product of this thing with itself. So, this and this is x m x 
and so on. So, this and uh, when we take the expectation and uh, so defining R x x L. So, assuming uh, this is so all of this, so everything is under the assumption that x in is wide sensation R x x L as expected value of this. So, this is the correlation matrix of x. So, let us quickly look at the properties of the correlation matrix of x. So, this is Hermitian symmetric that is the rows are uh, conjugate transposes of the columns which is easy to see because R x x L conjugate will be expected value of x n minus L conjugate n which is equal to R x x minus L. So, if we take the transpose we will get the complex conjugate of this. So, this is Hermitian symmetric, this is a Toplitz matrix. A Toplitz matrix means that all the diagonals contain identical values. So, if you look at this, it will be R x x 0, R x x 1 and so on. So, here will be R x x 0, R x x minus 1 and R x x 1 and so on. So, this principal diagonal will contain R x x 0's, this will contain R x x 1's, this second diagonal will contain R x x minus 1 and uh, so on. So, this is a Toplitz matrix, all the diagonals contain the same values. The third property is that it is positive semi definite, that is A Hermitian R A is greater than or equal to 0 for all A. or for all complex A, this is true. So, to verify this, we write permission R A can be written as A times expected value of X Hermitian X A. Since A is a constant, I can take the expectation operator outside expectation of A A Hermitian X, X Hermitian A. This now A Hermitian X is the complex conjugate of X Hermitian A. A Hermitian X will be a scalar, X Hermitian A will also be a scalar, and uh, these are complex conjugates of each other. So, this equals A Hermitian X mod square. So, this will always be this will always be non-negative and hence since this is always non-negative the expectation will also always be non-negative. So, the matrix is positive semi-definite or non-negative definite. So, reversal is not here. So, it is a non-singular matrix meaning that it is determinant so, non singular means all the eigenvalues are non zero, or simply stated, it is an invertible matrix. This is an invertible matrix or a full rank matrix. And finally, if we try to extend this. So, we have R m and we have this vector R m that is defined like this, then we can define the covariance matrix for the length m plus 1 vector. So, we have uh, defined the covariance matrix for the length m vector as R m. 
so this should be bold face actually so we can then in terms of this correlation vector defined like this define the covariance matrix of the length m plus 1 vector like this so you take rm you append the this row vector below it and append the column vector next to it and end it with rxx0 this will be the covariance matrix for length m and uh, this is a recursive way to construct correlation matrices of random processes Similar to the correlation matrix is the covariance matrix which will not be, so I, since we have come all this way, let me quickly define the covariance matrix. So, this is the correlation matrix which is matrix sigma x x m equals x x m minus Yeah. mu is the value of x n. Moreover, since this is a white sense stationary process, mu is a constant, this is the all ones vector. So, covariance matrix is nothing but or mu subtract the mean subtracted or mu square mean square subtracted from all the entries. So, in general for all the random processes that we will consider in this course, we assume the underlying process to be 0 mean without the loss of generality. We uh, assume the underlying process to be 0 mean and hence sigma x x m equals r x x m and we will use the term since the underlying process is 0 mean we will use the terms uh, correlation matrix and covariance matrix interchangeably. So, uh, that is all for this lecture we will look at uh, power spectral density and whiteness of random processes in the next lecture. Thank you. Thank you.